Hey guys and welcome to this video called Tabernacles and the Olive Tree. So in this video I'm just going to go over what's come to me in the last couple of days. Uh, it should be a fairly short video but first of all I just want to go over the water and the wine um, topic that we discussed the last time and a couple of other things have come to me since then. So the wine libation which accompanies all sacrifice in all the other feasts throughout the year took place on the altar and this represents God's wrath being satisfied by the sacrifice. So the sacrifice is obviously Jesus Christ and uh, the, the blood which saves us and the wrath of God. So Jesus Christ atones for our sins uh, and that saves us from the wrath of God. And so, so the wine is, is the representation of the wrath of God. And that's very clear in the book of Revelation, which we'll go through just now. The only feast which celebrates with song and dance um, is is Sukkot, which is also the only feast which has the water libation. The Gospel of John chapter 7 makes clear that the water libation on tabernacles represents the Holy Spirit. In John 7.37 it says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, that's Hoshana Rava, that's the one that we're looking at, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. So in the last video I said that uh, it's the only place that Jesus stood, but that wasn't quite accurate. But it is the only place that he, he stands and cries. And we know that there's going to be the voice of an archangel in this and uh, the, the, the trump. So anyways, he says, He that believeth on me, as the, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So when Jesus turned the water into wine and used the number of six, that is uh, the number of man, six purification vessels that the Jews used, it left them with the inability to purify themselves. And there are numerous rarely considered allusions which can be gleaned from this miracle. And we discussed this uh, in, in the last video, but I'm just going to go over a couple of other things. So first and foremost, they had Jesus at the wedding and were clearly not prepared. So this is an allusion to the foolish virgins. Jesus did not want to perform the miracle and he gave Mary a gentle rebuke saying, Woman, what have I to do with thee? And this is an allusion to Israel. That is, Mary was the human which gave birth to Jesus, but Israel was the nation which gave birth to Jesus. And his mother, who is a type of Israel, said to the unnamed servant, who is a type of the Holy Spirit, remember um, in, in the Bible when there's an unnamed servant, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it represents the Holy Spirit. It was an unnamed servant that went to seek out a bride for Isaac, which is like the, the Holy Spirit seeks out the bride for Jesus Christ. And uh, Mary says, said to uh, the servant, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it, which is... To say, do not be disobedient with closed ears and unbelieving eyes as Israel were. And in the host's preparation, uh, there was insufficient consideration for the wine to be provided to the guests. And as wine is an allusion to the wrath of God, we know it says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And it says that a book of remembrance is taken and the Lord hearkened and and the people who feared his name and spoke often to one another, those are the ones that he's going to save. Who are, who, are, um, who, are, who are in the fear of the Lord, of the, of the day of the Lord coming, who, who see this day coming and who fear, the, who, who fear the, the power of God and who fear his anger. And Jesus instructed that the vessels of purification be filled with water, that's the Holy Spirit, and they were filled to the brim, it says, which is an allusion to the wise virgins. And Jesus told the servants to draw the wine and give it to the governor of the feasts. So not the bride and the bridegroom. So the governor of the feast was responsible for the wedding. And this is telling us that the leaders, the leaders are held responsible for preparing the bride. So without water, after the miracle of Cana, they had wine but no water. And if Sukkot is the feast on which the rapture takes place... And the water, which is the Holy Spirit, is turned into wine, then there is only wine remaining, that is, the wrath of God. And in Revelation, it's full of the mention of wine. And it says, and there in 14.8, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine 
of the wrath of her fornication. And in 1410, this almost goes to prove that this is talking about Sukkot. It says, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture. The only time that wine is mixed with anything is during the feast of Sukkot. Into the cup of his indignation, he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels in the presence of the Lamb. And in Revelation 16, 9, And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God, to give unto her the cup of the wine of his fierceness, of his wrath. And in Revelation 17, 2, it says, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So you can see, the book of Revelation is full of mention of wine. And for all, it says in 18.3, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And it's also interesting that when Jesus returned to Cana the second time, which is where the wedding took place, there was a man who had a sick son to which Jesus said, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. So Hoshana Rabba this, the great salvation, the day, uh, the last day of, uh, of, of Sukkot, the seventh day of Sukkot, the great salvation. Five days before Passover, our Lord rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. As Zechariah 9, 9 prophesied, he will be on, on, the, on an ass or on a colt, on a donkey. And the people who believed on him and were waiting for him, they knew he was coming to Jerusalem was singing Psalms 118, 25 to 26. And that says in Psalm 118, 25, Save now, or Hoshana, I beseech thee, O Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. Baruch haba Bashai Adonai. The Pharisees considered this blasphemous because this psalm was supposed to be sung unto God. The people who were waiting for Yeshua were also cutting down palm branches and waving them around, which sounds very much like what they're supposed to do on the Feast of Tabernacles, which is detailed in Leviticus 23 and also as a rejoicing before God. In Leviticus 23:40 it says, And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of the goodly trees, the branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and the willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And in Nehemiah 8.15, it also, it also records on the Feast of Tabernacles that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches and pine branches and myrtle branches and palm branches and branches of the thick trees to make booths, as it is written. Notice how it mentions olive branches first. Keep that in mind. We're going to go over that just now. So we read in the gospel accounts in Matthew 21, And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from trees and stored them in the way. And the multitudes that went before God and that followed cried, saying, Hoshana, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hoshana, Hosanna in the highest. Save. Salvation. Save now. Mark 11, 8 says, And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off the trees and stored them in the way. And they went before, and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, Hoshanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And in John 12, 13, it says that they took branches of the palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the King Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. So, the olive tree, right? This Psalm 118, 25, 26 was due to be read on Hoshana Rava, which is where the word Hoshana or Hosanna, save now, was proclaimed on the last day of the feast because this was the day the judgment is considered delivered. So, could it be that the Pharisees were confused and annoyed because the people of Yeshua, who they thought were foolish and beneath them, were doing things with palm trees and pro and performing ceremony, which according to tradition, was supposed to be done on the Feast of Tabernacles. This was supposed to be done on the Feast of Tabernacles. As far as the, uh, the description of what they were doing and what they were saying was supposed to be done on Hoshana Rabbah, which is the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. They were saying things that were not supposed to be said at the Passover festival. But Jesus Christ, they believe, was Messiah. And they believed that he was the Son of God. 
they believed his testimony and therefore they were they thought that salvation had come and of course salvation had come but what i'm trying to say is that this these actions that they were taking were actions that were supposed to happen on the feast of tabernacles and with regards to the olive branch it says and they should publish and proclaim in all their cities in jerusalem saying go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches so nehemiah's account lists olive branches which are to be fetched for the uh for the feast of tabernacles and to make the booths and in romans 11 from uh, romans 9 is uh is uh, paul's uh, detailing of his israel's history past israel in the past romans 10 is israel present and romans 11 is israel's future now now paul uses the olive tree as the illusion to describe the uh, the, uh, the the procedure which God is going to graft the Gentiles in, which is the um, which is the, the wild olive branch into the natural uh, root or the natural olive tree, and uh, the the natural branch, which is Israel, is going to be broken off. But He tells us here that if uh, we're not to boast of that, because the the root bears us, and we do not we do not bear. The root. So if we if we boast, we boast of the root. We provoke Israel to jealousy because we give glory to Yeshua, and that provokes them to jealousy because um, well, that's what the Bible says it's going to do. So we don't boast in ourselves that that we are saved, but we boast the fact that Yeshua has saved us. And it says very clearly, Paul says here, which I'm just going to go through that um, that if we don't, uh, continue on in belief, so we fall away as it says is going to happen. And there's a, there's apostasy and all these kinds of things. Then God's going to break, uh, the, uh, the wild branch off and he's going to graft in the natural branch. Now there's a lot of talking of breaking of branches and, uh, it tells us that they're going to break the branches of the trees in order to celebrate the fe the feast of tabernacles so what i'm what i'm trying to to uh to draw together here is the fact that what paul has described uh in romans 11 about israel and the gentiles and when the gentiles uh become in sounds like the feast of tabernacles so he says and if some of the branches be broken off that's israel and thou that's the Gentiles being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them and with them partakers of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. So we are, uh, we are uh, inherited in, we are adopted into the inheritance of Israel and those blessings. It says, boast not against the branches, don't boast against Israel. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root. We don't bear the root. We don't bear Yeshua, but the root, thee, Yeshua saves us. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, right? Because of unbelief of Israel. And thou standest by faith, so we are saved by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Fear the Lord your God. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, listen carefully, lest he also spare not thee, the Gentiles. Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God on them which fell, which is Israel, severity, but towards thee, which is the Gentiles, goodness. If, here's a very big if, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, if we do not continue in faith in his goodness, thou also shalt be cut off. So the branch, the Gentile branch is going to be broken off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, that's Israel, come to belief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to the nature into a good olive tree, so the, the Gentiles were the wild olive tree, and we were grafted into the good olive tree, which has the roots, uh, which bared Israel, broken, which was broken off, how much more shall Israel, which is the natural branch, be grafted into their own olive tree? So what Paul is saying here sounds very much like what takes place on the feast of tabernacles and the breaking of the branches and romans eleven twenty five is the biggest uh verse of the chapter and so he's just told us of the breaking and the grafting in and the things which they do on tabernacles and he says for i would not brethren that ye should be ignorant of this mystery don't be ignorant of israel lest you be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part 
is happened to Israel. In part, that means they recognize the Father, but they don't recognize the Son. And that is, until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. And there's only one thing that's going to remove Israel's blindness and many others with them. And that is the rapture of the church. So, Paul is telling us the things which are going to take place are branches being broken off, which sounds like the Feast of Tabernacles. And the rapture of the church is then told uh, to us, which takes away the blindness of Israel uh, immediately after Paul gives us this illusion of the breaking of the branches. Also, guys, the things that they did on Lashana Rava, where they would walk around the altar once every day of Sukkot, and then on the last day of Sukkot, they would walk around the altar seven times, and then they would say, Hoshana, which is saved now, is almost exactly like what they did around Jericho. So we know that they walked around Jericho uh, for seven days, and on the seventh day, they walked around Jericho seven times on the seventh day, and then they blew the trumpet. And it says that uh, when they blew the trumpet, the walls of Jericho fell down and every man ascended before him. So the last trump on the last day of, uh, of Hoshana Rabbah, could it be? See you in the sky.